Tim Blaine Shapiro, Divorce661.com. We're back with the day in the life of a LDA with The Daily Perspective, episode 41. I hope you guys are happy, having a happy new year. Couple, it took a couple of weeks to get back in the groove, went on vacation, and came back sick. You could probably still hear it in my voice, still quite sick on antibiotics, but back in the office, and we are busier than ever. You know, there's a stat, and I wasn't going to talk about this, and but uh, there's a stat about div- January being the busiest divorced month of the year. That's a lie. I'm going to tell you that straight out. It is busy um, because people probably talked about starting off on a new uh, a new year and a new, uh, you know, starting their divorce process. But in actuality, the filings <clears throat> are not as high as, <clears throat> excuse me, any other month in the year. I mean, February, if you want to know the truth, is busier than January. We have crazy busy summers. We're pretty pretty uh, busy every month, but January is no busier than the rest of the months of the year. And to be honest with you, it is, uh, it, it's the ramp up month. People are starting to talk about going through divorce, but they're not actually filing for divorce. So that whole stat, I just saw it on the news. I was watching uh, ABC seven or whatever channel that is. And they said, and every year they talk about how January is divorce month and it's a lie. Don't fall for it. Um, it's just not true. Anyways, with the daily perspectives, what we do is talk about uh, what's going on, uh, new business we're taking on, cases, issues clients are having, people that are going through divorce, and so you can learn a little bit about more, a little more about what I do in this industry. So you can maybe uh, decide to hire me, maybe you like me, maybe you hate me. In either case, I'm okay with it. If you don't like me, don't call me, and I won't work with you. That's totally fine. But here's what we had going on this week. Um, it's now Tuesday, January 16th. We had 12 consultations. So it has been busy. People getting the information. Um, like I talked about, they want to know about the process and what it takes to start the process and so forth. I'm usually talking to people about, you know, making sure it's amicable make sure they talk to their spouse and all that good stuff. Um, we did have several new people start with us, uh, today. We had three new divorce cases, um, for LA County, uh, folks in Santa Clarita. We had a San Benito County, a uh, new case today out of Hollister and Sacramento County new case. They uh, they live in Sacramento, obviously. LA County, keep in mind, we are still e-filing. Uh, yesterday uh, was a holiday. Courts were closed. It was, um, I forget what holiday it was, Martin Luther King Day. Courts were closed, but because of e-filing in LA County, we can still e-file. Everything we filed yesterday, we already got back this morning. Uh, those new cases were filed. Uh, San Benito County, we're able to e-file, and uh, Sacramento County, I saw that you guys are allowing e-file on civil cases now, so you're starting to get your act together, but nothing for family law there yet, so we have to still submit new cases via uh, mail. Uh, five new judgment reject cases today. So half my business comes to be comes to me with new clients starting from scratch. They haven't filed anything with the court. The other half of clients come to me who have started their divorce case and now uh, need help finalizing their divorce. I had five of those uh, today. Um, LA County, uh, we had clients in Pomona, uh, Pasadena, and several in Central uh, County. If you guys are amicable and you have uh, a filed divorce case, and where most people get hung up or where people uh, get stuck is they will file the initial summons petition. They'll, they might even e-file through LA County's guide and file or your local county's guide and file. They have that everywhere. And then they get stuck because then you get into the procedural nightmare of the disclosures, the judgment, the settlement agreement, and that's where it gets very tricky. And that's where we have a lot of people come to us to finalize their divorce. And of these five judgment reject cases we took today, three are already done because they got us their file documents. They already had their terms. They provided me their terms based on a settlement agreement uh, kind of template that I gave them. Um, Just basically gave me the raw data and said, Tim, here's what we agree to. I take that raw data, put it into a settlement agreement format, and they e-sign, e-notarize, and then I e-file their case with the court. Uh, Two have already been accepted by the court today, so it goes very fast. If you find yourself in that situation where you uh, have filed and you want to finalize your divorce, um, again, that's half of the business that I take. Um, We had six L.A. County cases approved. Uh, They were taking a little bit longer. Uh, We did submit several before Christmas. Um, and keep in mind, the courts, LA County has been great on on all their e-file, even the judgment approvals were getting, you know, within several hours to same day to next day approvals on the judgments. When Christmas came around and New Year's, uh, we saw it take a week or so, maybe eight or nine court days. 
which is still super fast compared to all the other courts. But keep in mind, this is because clerks and judges and so forth were on vacation as well. And so it took a little bit of time. But as soon as we got back in, like January 4th, 5th, 6th, uh, there was a ton, had a ton of new cases that came back approved by the court. Um, keep in mind, also, you know, because these are, we get our cases to, uh, finalized so fast with the court, um, even though we have these cases approved, you know, in January, early, you know, first week and two, week or two, uh, week and week two of January, um, they're not finalized until June of 2024. So people uh, misunderstand that. We, while I can get your divorce case approved in five weeks in LA County, approved, signed by the judge, there's nothing else coming from the court. You're totally done. The final divorce date that's going to be stamped on there will be six months from when we got the process started. But nothing happens after that six month mark. I had someone email me today, say, Tim, um, in October, you uploaded our approved divorce case. Um, and now we're supposed to be finalized uh, February 1st. <coughs> What's going to happen? I said, nothing. You already have your final divorce paperwork. Um, I already provided to you back in October. You're not getting anything else from the court. You're just going to be magically no longer married once that final divorce date passes. Again, sorry, I'm sick and I, I, I'm coughing here and there. So I apologize for that. Uh, we also had some, aside from Orange County cases, <coughs> excuse me, aside from Orange County uh, or LA County cases being uh, approved, we also had an Orange County case approved. Uh, when it came back, I track when I, we have to mail those in. Everything from LA, other than LA County, for the most part, there's a couple now counties where I can e-file the judgment to now, which is great. And I'm really looking forward to all counties coming online uh, for that. Are we get a little blurry here. What's happening here? Oh, there we go. Um, but uh, with Orange County, we have to mail in. That took two months to review and approve. They're usually running two to three months, so that's on the on the little sooner side of things. Two Santa Clarita approval, uh, Santa Clara uh, approvals. Those both took four months. Ventura County. Uh, the clerks there have been telling me that they're running in the four to six month range, and we just had one come back in the three month range. So that's good. They're really all over the place. I don't know what they're. I know I've talked about this in the past. They're a little bit backlogged, and uh, they're telling me expect six months. We just got one back in three months. We still have one that's outstanding for six months. So I don't know why it's taking longer than the other. It doesn't matter. Um, I had a, a mediator who I work with that sends me numerous cases um, every month, and uh, we got one back on three months and the we had submitted one six months prior we still haven't got that one back he asked he asked me he said is that because one has kids and assets and debts and the other one didn't or what's the reasoning and honestly i don't know um i know when i worked for the la county courts um 12 ish years ago doing the judgment reviews that there was really no organization on it and so imagine you're sitting in a, in a room maybe like this and I'm approving judgments, and there's a big stack of them behind me. I mean, stacks and stacks of them behind me. And I'm just grabbing the next one off the top to review and approve. And then here comes the mail, and the mail room comes in and dumps another stack on top of what I was just about to get to. And they're not picking up the new ones and putting them on the bottom. There's no organization. And so technically, I could receive a uh, judgment package that day and review it the same day, whereas – as I, if I don't get far enough down that stack, they're not getting reviewed. And maybe it was just about to get reviewed and it's already been a few months. And then now another stack gets on top of it. It's going to add some more time. And I don't know if that's what's going on with Ventura. I don't know if they're keeping track and, and, and there's an order to, you know, where they'll process them in the order received. I hope they are, but there's just no rhyme or reason on how soon these get approved based on when they're submitted. And it has nothing to do with the complexity of the case. I can tell you that. Um, so that was Ventura. LA County file judgment still being approved in days. I have some updates for you <clears throat> for e-filing. Solano County will now allow e-filing beginning February 5th. We're definitely looking forward to that. So we got about three weeks for that. I just actually had a mediator in Solano County um, e um, refer me business. They had, did the mediation for their clients and uh, sent me the, them to uh, put them through the process. We still had to mail file their case with Solano, but I'll be looking forward to e-filing with Solano County in the future. Um, four courts that now allow, there's another update, four courts that now allow for e-filing the entire divorce case. Now, keep in mind, I work in with every county in California, I, and I handle a lot of cases between 30 and 50 a month uh, throughout California, probably 50% in LA County, the other 50% throughout the remainder of California. So because we have so many 
cases, call it 25 cases a month that are in various counties throughout California. We're probably filing one, at least one or two in the counties every two months. So I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. We're always keeping up to speed on what's happening. So new counties that have allowed the entire case to be uh, the e-filed, obviously LA County, that's been going on for a while. Santa Cruz allowed me to e-file a judgment and uh, that's new and we got that approved already, which is awesome. Yolo County and Tulare County or Tulare. Now, don't beat me up if you live there. We do work with your county. I may not pronounce it correctly, but um, they do allow e-file of the entire divorce case. And I'm hoping by this time next year, you know, or next, yeah, 2025, all courts are complete e-file start to finish. You know who I hate? Sacramento. You haven't done anything yet. I saw civils on the board, but why not family law? I don't get it. They're a challenging court to work with the, to begin with. So I'm not surprised that they're probably going to be the last county to get on board. All right, let's talk about some issues some clients had as far as hiring me and they didn't have, they didn't have issues hiring me, but they had issues and so they hired me. Um, and I want to talk about some of the things that have come up when I saw and reviewed their paperwork and took care of their divorce cases. So number one, dismissing cases after approved, but before the six months have passed requires a hearing, but the hearing date will come after the divorce day is final. So I was mentioning earlier how when we get our some of our divorce cases approved, well, most of them actually, if you start with me, I'm going to have your divorce case approved before the six month mark. And it, that doesn't cause issues. So let's say, you know, it's January, we start your divorce case, I submit it for review, uh, middle of uh, February, and we get it approved in March. So it's only been three months, let's say. So when the court approves it, it's approved. Your your divorce is official. There's nothing left you have to do. But your divorce finalization date is pushed out six months because of the six month cooling off period. So let's say your divorce is approved in March, but your final divorce date is in June. And let's say sometime between June, I'm sorry, between March and June, you and your spouse say, "Hey, I think we want to get together." We're still within that six month window, even the even though the judge already signed the 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 judgment and you're done, you still have that opportunity to have that set aside. And so you, your divorce case can be dismissed before the six months. That's Even though it's approved, you can still do that. Technically, you can still do that. But procedurally, it's kind of a quagmire, if you will, because the courts are so busy. You have to, once the judge has signed the judgment and has ordered you to be divorced, even though you're still within that six-month window, you have to now go to court and ask the judge to set aside and dismiss your divorce case. You both do. And the issue with doing that is because the courts are busy. You know, we bypass the entire timeline with the courts. There's no delays with us finalizing your divorce because you're not going to see the judge. Once you ask to go see the judge, that's where you talk about these delays of six months, a year, and so forth because of trials and getting into court. So if we had these clients who said, Tim, we have like three weeks left before our divorce is final officially. It is final. It's approved by the judge. But the six months isn't up. Can we have it dismissed because we decided we wanted to remain married? I re remain married. I said, yes, but we have to get you into court. And when I checked the court calendar and scheduling for it was it was 60 days away. I said, so unfortunately, there's no way you're going to get into court before your divorce is actually finalized on paper. So that's the issue that comes with that. I want I want to say it's probably the only downside to. Uh, us having your divorce cases done so quickly is once in a while, maybe two or three a year out of the thousands of divorce cases we handle every year will clients will say, Hey, we want to reconcile, but they've, the judge has already approved their divorce. We had, we did get people into court once where um, they said, Hey, we don't want this to, to be um, finalized and they did dismiss it. Um, but again, it does require a court hearing. Number two, preliminary disclosures cannot be waived. Judgment prep case I took on and they filed the 141 as final, not preliminary. So this is actually two different things. Um, so pre preliminary disclosures cannot be waived. We're talking about the declaration regarding service of declaration of disclosure, FL 141. Even in a default with an agreement, so no response, but parties are submitting a settlement agreement, the respondent needs to do their preliminary disclosures. And that's where I want to say a good 50% of the people that have their judgment rejected, they're trying to do a default with agreement, but the, the respondent is not doing their side of the paperwork. That is still required. And uh, it's an easy fix, 
but that's where we're seeing a lot of judgment rejects uh, when cases come in. I'll look online, I'll look at the case summary, and, and I'll see that the judgment's being submitted and being rejected, and I won't see any of the procedural forms by the respondent being signed, and I'll say, uh, is your spouse, and these are on consultations, obviously, I'll say, is your spouse cooperative going to sign off? They said, yeah, they signed a settlement agreement, but the judgment's being rejected. I said, ah, that's because the respondent still needs to do their preliminary disclosure, so those cannot be waived. I saw another case uh, this week where they didn't do their preliminary disclosures on that FL-141. There's a choice between the preliminary and the final. And what they, I think what they're thinking was, oh, you know what, I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to skip the preliminary just and just go to final and, and tell the court this is my final uh, declaration of disclosure. You can't do that. The preliminaries cannot be waived, so you need to mark that preliminary box on the FL-141. The finals, uh, final declaration of disclosure can be waived, and you do that by signing the FL 144. Timeline differences with different courts. So specifically, I had clients this week where one, one uh, spouse lived in Ventura, the other spouse lived in LA County. And I said, hey, I'm going to file, file you guys in LA County. And they said, why? I said, because of the time difference. I can, in LA County, I can have your divorce approved in five weeks. In, in Ventura, as I was talking about earlier, they are taking up to six months for review and approval and everything is done by mail where um, we can we can um, electronically file your petition with both counties, but with the judgment in Ventura, we have to mail file. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's about a six-month process right now, unfortunately. And LA County, I can have you approved judgment, final paperwork in hand, signed by the judge, stamped by the court in five weeks. So there's different counties that take different timelines. And when you call me, and if you live in different counties, it's not an issue for me. It doesn't matter. It does give us a choice. And I will decide, if you allow me, to place you in the court that has the fastest timeline. Default with agreements. We're number four now. Default with agreement still requires disclosures from the respondent. Okay, I just talked about that. I guess I jumped ahead on that. Just make sure you're doing your disclosures. Remember, there's three types of divorce processes that are amicable. Default with agreement, default without agreement, and uncontested. We always follow the default with agreement case because as the benefit of the respondent not have, having to file the response, but they get to participate in the process, sign the settlement agreement, do their disclosures, and be completely involved in the process. So I think what people where people go wrong is they'll say, Tim, we didn't I didn't want to involve the respondent. I thought it'd be easier to do a default where I don't have to involve the other party. That is the that is the last resort. Default without agreement is the last resort. I talked about earlier how the biggest issue is people are not doing their disclosures. The bigger issue is people are trying to do defaults with no agreement, thinking that's going to be a simpler process um, than a default with agreement because they don't have to involve their spouse. But it gets highly technical and it's very difficult to get those approved by the court. Number five, when preparing your judgment, you need to add account numbers. Okay, this is a super simple thing where people go wrong. I've seen people call me and, and send me their settlement agreement and I'll look at their judgment paperwork. And usually there's there's numerous issues, not just this, but the judgment's being rejected for two reasons. One, they're not listing any account numbers at all. Um, we're seeing where they'll say, I'm keeping my um, LA fire and police pension or I'm keeping my deferred comp I'm keeping, you know, they're just saying deferred comp, LA fire and police pension, um, you know, Fidelity 401k, uh, but they're not listing account numbers. You got to list the account number, not the whole thing, just the last four digits of the account. This goes with everything. Um, and I know some uh, assets don't have account numbers. There's certain like CalPERS, they have ID numbers. And if there's no associated account number, ID number, there's nothing associated with that um, asset or debt, then use the last four digits of your social security number. The court's going to want some type of identifying number. The other issue uh, I saw some courts uh, rejecting judgments for is because they're adding too much information. They're giving, you know, the here's the name, you know, Bank of America account number, the full, you know, 16 digit account number, however long the bank account number is, the address of the bank, um, social security numbers, driver's light. I mean, way too much information to where the court said we're rejecting your judgment because you're giving so much information that the, and because the settlement agreement, your judgment, and almost every document you file at the court is potentially public record that you're setting yourself up for um, identity theft. And so they rejected their judgment for too much information being submitted. I've even seen um, mediators, attorneys uh, draft settlement documents that have social security numbers for the kids. 
um, date of birth, obviously. But I mean, once you're giving that, you're giving way too much information to the court. My default is I give the court the only information they need, the basic information they need to approve your case. Number six, when 30 days have passed, can we still finalize your divorce? And the answer is yes. I had a consultation today uh, with a client. He just, I saw he paid while I was doing this video and they were the, the clients in Pomona. And he said, Tim, my wife filed in October and 30 days have passed. I've already been served. Is it too late to finalize a divorce? I said, no, even if the, de the default, the requested or default had not been filed yet, but even if it had been, we still can turn that default case into a default with agreement. Because remember, I told you there's two types, default with and default without an agreement. So we've had cases where the default was already filed. I said, well, will the respondent participate? They said, yes, perfect. No problem. Default's already filed. We just do the uh, default with agreement type settlement agreement and we're done. In this case, all they had done is filed and served. The default hadn't been filed. I'll be filing the default with the default with agreement package, but we're going to take care of their divorce case today. I'll probably have them totally done because they were pretty straightforward. They did have minor children, but they had uh, some minor assets and debts we're going to list. They just want to do joint legal and physical custody. They don't want child support. They don't want spouse support. It takes me about an hour to put that all together. And because they're LA County, I can have that drafted today. I still have an hour or two left of daylight here. We can work and get that done. And uh, they can e-sign, e-notarize, and I can get that e-filed with the court. And they'll be done and probably approved by next week is what I told them. Because LA County's uh, judgment approval is taking just a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on how busy they are when we submit it. Number seven, where people get stuck. As I mentioned earlier, you can file for divorce. You can serve your spouse. You can do the proof of service. After that, things get real. Things get tricky. Disclosures. What do you have to fill out? The judgment package. The settlement agreement, people get confused on what's the settlement, what's the judgment, or they'll say, we don't, any, we don't have any assets or debts. We don't have any kids. So we don't have a settlement agreement. You do. Your settlement agreement says no assets, no debts, no kids, no alimony, no nothing. You still have to have a settlement agreement. I see people uh, turn in their judgments. Uh, they turn in that FL 180. Uh, it says judgment on it. So it sounds like that's the judgment and they'll turn the, that two page form in and that's it. Well, that's going to obviously get rejected because it doesn't have the, uh, uh, property declar or the property order or the spouse support order behind it, which at a minimum is required. And if there's kids, you need to have the custody order and the child support order. But they'll say, Tim, why would we turn in a custody order or a property order or a spouse support order if we don't want any of that? Because on the answer is because on those forms, you're going to say on the spouse support order, I don't want spouse support. And you're going to put on the property order. We have no property divide. And on the custody order, you're going to say joint legal and physical at a minimum. And the child support order, you're going to say we don't want any. Now, I super simplified that part of it. There's certain language and it has to be done a certain way and so forth. There's other procedural documents that go along with that. But, uh, you know, I really do feel like I'm the matrix when it comes to doing this. I'm not, you know, I, I do feel I'm very good at my job. I'm not going to say I'm the best, um, even though maybe I feel that way. But after doing this 12 years and, you know, it's only amicable divorce case, not like I'm handling complex trials, going to court, talking about the law, giving testimony in front of a judge and all that. I'm talking from a purely procedural nature. I can look at your paperwork and know in five seconds exactly what's wrong with your case. And no matter what, if you guys are amicable, I can take care of your case. I can finalize it. Whether you start it on your own, you need me to take over and fix everything, or you want me to help you from scratch, I can handle your divorce case anywhere in California. I hope you enjoyed Day in the Life of an LDA, Divorce 661 Daily Perspective, Episode 41. We'll talk to you tomorrow.